Welcome, it's Ben Moore from West Highlands United Methodist Church, inviting you to join us once again for worship. It's time again to gather around music that stirs our hearts. It's time again to gather around a, a, a word designed especially for our young people, so you'll want to invite them to come and join you as uh, we move into worship together. It's time to listen to portions of the scripture that are read and to some reflections that I will share. It's time, it's time to worship. So as we lean into that time, let's center our souls uh, with a quick word of prayer. Join me if you would. Speak to us and give us ears to listen, eyes to see, hearts to respond. to words that we need to bring focus, to help us practice the principles that create in us those people you are calling us to become in these next minutes work in our hearts, stir our spirits. It's time to connect. It, it's time to worship that we might take another step along discipleship's journey. This we ask in Jesus' name. Come and find the quiet center in the crowded life we lead. Find the room for hope to enter. Find the frame where we are free. Clear the chaos and the clutter. Clear our eyes that we can see. All the things. Diana Ross sang the words to us a while ago. Reach out and touch somebody's hand. Make this world a better place if you can. Take a little time out your busy day to give encouragement to someone who's lost their way. It's a tradition in the church to greet one another in a way that it encourages and uplifts everyone who crosses your path. And so in the next few moments, I wanna invite you to reach out and touch, not someone's hand, uh, because we're not together, but someone's heart. 
Take a little time out of your busy day uh, to help someone along life's way. Uh, just send a text, uh, jot down a note, um, let someone know that you care. Greet one another. Spread God's love as the music comes. How's it going? Um, in case you don't know me, my name is Jessica. So over quarantine, I've had a little bit more time on my hands just because I'm not driving to school anymore or going out with friends as much. So I've been getting into other hobbies such as baking. I actually made these muffins this morning and they're like really good. I made them with cinnamon and sugar, mostly sugar, and I'm actually really proud of them. I like how they came out and I think they taste really good. They're so good, in fact, that I kind of want to share them with everyone. Since I enjoyed them, I want them to taste good food too. Unfortunately, can't really do that right now. Because of the pandemic, it's better that we all stay home and stay safe, and so I can't really share food with people right now. But you could probably understand how excited I was and how much I want to share it, because I think it's good. I think we can all relate to that. Just whenever we find something that's really, really cool or really good, we want to share it with our friends, because it's amazing. Why wouldn't we want to share that with the people we love? The idea of sharing the things that we care most about, really cool stuff, kind of goes into our topic today. Today we'll be talking about discipleship. So to be a disciple basically means that you're a follower of Jesus, that you try to not only learn from him, but to live like him and to walk in his footsteps. And one of the key duties, one of the main roles of being a disciple is sharing the good news of salvation with other people. So a really good example of someone who was a disciple and who's really excited to share the word of Jesus was John the Baptist. When he understood who Jesus Christ was, when he met him and understood the just what this was, he was so excited to tell his friends. He ran to all the people he knew and was telling them how this man was the Lamb of God. Once they came and met him, they also realized the same thing. So they went and started to tell their friends and the word just spread like crazy. Just how these men were super eager to tell everyone about the Lord, we should be too. I mean, it really is an amazing thing. We're talking about God, the creator of literally everything who sent down his son as a living person, and then who gave up his life just so that we could one day be adopted into the family in heaven. That is an incredible thing. And with something that that was that amazing, why wouldn't we want to share that? So an example of discipleship that I've personally experienced was when the West Highlands Youth Group went to Peru on a mission trip two summers ago. While we were there, we went to the plaza in the evenings of Ica City and told people about God. In the afternoons, we ran a vacation Bible school where we got to teach kids in the neighborhood about Jesus and about how much he loves us and about what he's done for us. And even in the mornings, we helped fix up a medical center. And while we might not have been talking about Jesus as much to the people who ran the center, we were sharing Christ's love in a different way by helping them out in a time where they needed it. In this way, we were able to spread the word of God and spread the news about who Jesus Christ was and about what he was about by sharing not only his word, but also his kind acts, an example of his love. So as you can see, there's many ways to be a disciple. You can tell your friends about the Lord. You can just do simple kind acts throughout the day to try to live in his footsteps too, and just be an example of what a follower is. So let this be a friendly reminder to be a disciple throughout the week.
tell people about his love or just show acts of kindness that are in step with who he is. I hope you guys have a wonderful week and please stay safe and love one another. Bye. The Old Testament lesson today is from the book of Exodus, chapter 32, verses 1 through 14. The people saw that Moses was taking a long time to come down from the mountain. They gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come on, make us gods who can lead us. As for this man Moses, who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we don't have a clue what has happened to him. Aaron said to them, All right, take out the gold rings from the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took out the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He collected them and tied them up in a cloth. Then he made a metal image of a bull calf, and the people declared, These are your gods, Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar in front of the calf. Then Aaron announced, Tomorrow will be a festival to the Lord. They got up early the next day and offered up entirely burned offerings and brought well-being sacrifices. The people sat down to eat and drink and then got up to celebrate. The Lord spoke to Moses, Hurry up and go down. Your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt are ruining everything. They've already abandoned the path that I commanded. They have made a metal bull calf for themselves. They've bowed down to it and offered sacrifices to it and declared, These are your gods, Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I've been watching these people and I've seen how stubborn they are. Now leave me alone. Let my fury burn and devour them. Then I'll make a great nation out of you. But Moses pleaded with the Lord his God, Lord, why does your fury burn against your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and amazing force? Why should the Egyptians say he had an evil plan to take the people out and kill them in the mountains and so wipe them off the earth? Calm down your fierce anger. Change your mind about doing terrible things to your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, whom you yourself promised. I'll make you descendants as many as the stars in the sky. And I've promised to you to give your descendants this whole land to possess for all time. Then the Lord changed his mind about the terrible things he said he would do to his people. The epistle reading today is found in the book of Philippines, chapter 4, verses 1 through 9 in the Common English Bible. Therefore, my brothers and sisters whom I love and miss, who are my joy and crown, Stand firm in the Lord. Loved ones, I urge Euodia and I urge Synthache to come to an agreement in the Lord. Yes, and I'm also asking you, loyal friend, to help these women who have struggled together with me in the ministry of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are in the scroll of life. Be glad in the Lord always. Again, I say, be glad. Let your gentleness show in your treatment of all people. The Lord is near. Don't be anxious about anything. Rather, bring up all of your requests to God in your prayers and petitions along with giving thanks. Then the peace of God that exceeds 
all understanding will keep your hearts and minds safe in Christ Jesus. From now on, brothers and sisters, if anything is excellent and if anything is admirable, focus your thoughts on these things, all that is true, all that is holy, all that is just, all that is pure, all that is lovely, and all that is worthy of praise. Practice these things. Whatever you learned, received, heard, or saw in us, the God of peace will be with you. And so ends the reading of today's epistle. Today's Gospel reading is found in the book of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 1 to 14 in the Common English Bible. Jesus responded by speaking again in parables. The kingdom of heaven is like the king who prepared a wedding party for his son. He sent his servants to call those invited to the wedding party, but they didn't want to come. Again, he sent other servants and said to them, Tell those who have been invited, Look, the meal is all prepared. I butchered the oxen and fattened the cattle. Now everything's ready. Come to the wedding party. But they paid no attention and went away. Some of their fields, some to their fields, others to their businesses. The rest of them grabbed their servants, abused them, and killed them. The king was angry. He sent his soldiers to destroy those murderers and set their city on fire. Then he said to his servants, The wedding par parties were prepared, and those who were invited weren't worthy. Therefore, therefore, go to the roads on the edge of town and invite everyone you find to the wedding party. Then those servants went to the roads and gathered everyone to fi they found, both good and evil. The wedding party was full of guests. Now when the king came in and saw the guests, he spotted a man who wasn't wearing wedding clothes. He said to them, Friend, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? But he was speechless. Then the king said to his servants, Tie his hands and feet and throw him into the farthest darkness. People there will be weeping and grinding their, and grinding their teeth. Many people were invited, but few were chosen. Like this? Or like that, this one, or that one, that one, or this one. It's a familiar routine. If you're like me and you, you've worn glasses for a few years, it's your annual visit to the optometrist or the ophthalmologist. You're, you're looking through a, a series of lenses at an image that's projected in front of you. You're practicing, focusing on that image that's being directed so that the optometrist or ophthalmologist can choose for you lenses that will help you move easily and graciously through the year that is ahead of you. Focus and practice are important in life. The pitcher focuses on the catcher's mitt in order to deliver the pitch at the point that they've selected. The quarterback focuses on where the receiver is supposed to be in order to deliver the pass in a way that it can be easily caught and his team can move forward. Focus and practice are important in life. Coaches and music directors said time after time, the way you practice is the way you will perform. So it's important to practice with intensity. It's important to practice with emotion because then when it's most important, that's the way you'll perform. 40 days is a long time. Long enough for Israel at the base of Sinai 
to practice those 10 not so simple rules to live by that Moses has given them, God having given them to Moses, Moses having passed them on to the people before he returns to the mountain to receive further guidance from God. Uh, but 40 days are also long enough for Israel to lose focus on those 10 not so simple rules. And so they come to Aaron. We're not sure Moses is coming back. We think we need to move in a different direction. We think we need to shift our focus. And what happens is a golden calf disaster, isn't it? Israel at the base of Sinai after 40 days loses its focus. And the result is disaster. Moses, on the other hand, 40 days into his special session with God atop Sinai, upon hearing that the people have shifted their focus and God's anger and angst against them keeps his focus on the task that God has given him and he enters, he engages God who is bent on destroying the people and starting over in a bit of a debate. It's a healthy back and forth. Not, not like what we saw on the television not that long ago. But God, if you destroy them, it will make you look bad. People will say, you just brought them out of Egypt to destroy them. People will say, you must not really be a God who cares. People will misunderstand you. And God reconsiders. Israel loses focus. 40 days into this new adventure with 10 not so easy rules to live by, Moses maintains his focus and it makes a difference. In our gospel lesson, focus and practice are in play as well. There's a wedding banquet. The king is inviting his closest friends to celebrate with him as his son is being married. What an honor to be invited. What a wonderful time of celebration is in store. But the friends have lost their focus, haven't they? They're too busy to be bothered. Or they're so busy that the invitation to a celebration feels like a bother and they decline. Some of them not only decline, but they actually kill the king's messengers who've been trying to invite them to a celebration, a time of rejoicing. So the king says to those servants who, who are left, well, the wedding is still happening. I want a celebration. My friends won't come. I will shift my focus to those along the highways and the byways. Gather them in. Let's have a feast. It's a time of celebration. But unfortunately, one of those who's been invited and who has accepted the invitation loses their focus. It's a wedding. And instead of showing up in his Sunday best, he's bedraggled. He's lost his focus. 
He's forgotten the purpose of the gathering. He doesn't come ready to celebrate. And the result is disaster for him. Paul, in, as his letter to the Philippians is winding down, shares with them words about focus and practice. Because focus and practice are keys to this discipleship life God is calling us toward. Discipleship, like life, is about focus and practice if we are to become the people that God has envisioned that we might be. And so Paul says, finally, friends, finally, friends, Focus on some critically important things. Practice those things that will keep the focus in place. What are those things that Paul lifts to the Philippians? Hear them again. From now on, finally, Brothers and sisters, if anything is excellent, if anything is admirable, if anything is worthy of praise, focus on these things. Discipleship is about focus and practice, Paul says. Finally, after all these words of encouragement that I've shared with you, let me sum it all up with this. Discipleship is about focus and practice. If anything is excellent, and I've lifted before you things that are excellent, God's upward call, Christ's example, my love for you, the faithful example that I've given. If there's anything that is excellent, and, and you know there is, if there's anything that is admirable, if there's anything that, 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 is, that is worthy, worthy of, of admiration, Something that folks will, will observe and say, wow, that, that, that's amazing. That, that, that's admirable. That, that's, that's what I'd like to be like. How, how, do I, how do I weave some of that into my life? How do I make some of that part of my focus? If there's anything excellent, if there's anything Admirable, admirable. If there's anything worthy of praise, focus on those things. Move in that direction. Discipleship is about focus. But he continues. All that is true, all that is holy, all that is just, all that is pure, all that is lovely, all that is worthy of praise, practice these things. Practice what is true. It can be a challenge to sift and sort in this time in which we're living. And I think, I think maybe in any time, what is what is true, really true? Neighbor said to me just this week, you know, it's so hard to know what the truth really is. We get mixed messages. 
Mixed messages blur focus. Practice what's true. It will help your life stay in focus. Practice what is holy. What, what is God-like? What if people were to see you doing that thing, they would say, oh, the God who's motivating them to do that must be someone that I'd like to know. That's, that's a great thing. That, that's a God-like thing to do, to really love, to consistently trust, to live your life from, from a center of, of hope. Those are holy things. Practice holy things because when it's time to perform, then that's that's the way you'll perform when the challenges come. You'll stay in focus. You'll perform that way. Whatever is just. You know, I, I think everyone is in agreement that justice is critically important. But we have to stay in focus and, and we have to keep practicing what we know is true and what we know is holy in order to consistently arrive at what is just. And, and temptation tends to knock our feet out from under us and bring a lack of focus and, and lead to uh, a gold calf meltdown. Can't it? Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is worthy of praise. Practice these things. Practice each day. It keeps your focus on that which is excellent. It keeps your focus on that which is worthy. It keeps your focus on that which is admirable. Discipleship is about focus and practice. Because focus gives us direction. Focus gathers resources around a common good. It helps us move in the direction that God would have us go. Practice keeps our focus honed. It's a constant, is, is it this one or is it that one? This one or that? That one or was it this? Practice guides us day by day by day through that kind of life-changing process that keeps our focus keen, our lives directed, Discipleship is about focus and practice. As you move through this week's challenges, 
you'll you'll turn them into opportunities if you can stay focused around that which is excellent and admirable and worthy and if you consistently practice what is pure and just and holy and true. And you will know a peace that only God can give. You know, the power of prayer is its ability to focus our thoughts and, and our hearts around concerns and questions that confront us. Prayer is a practice that feeds our faith and nourishes this, us on this journey of discipleship. So it's to prayer we turn now. Bow your heads with me. Good and gracious Lord, help us as we journey through this week to maintain our focus on you, on what is true and, and good and just, 
Lord, help us to practice in ways that feed our faith. And so we would lift those whom we know to be struggling along life's way. Some who've been stricken with illness. A president who even now is not fully recovered. And we thank you for the progress that he's made and for the doctors who've ministered to him. For countless others who are sharing his encounter with COVID. And for those who, who tragically have lost their lives in their struggle with this very, very serious disease. Be with those who face financial challenges as our economy runs smoothly and, and faithfully for so many, but has placed so many others out of work, taken from them the resources that they need to pay their rent and put food on their table. Lord, we pray for movement in a Congress, a government that seems stalemated. We ask that you would give wisdom to those stalemated government leaders. Help them find some common ground. Turn their attention toward what is just and what is true. Be with us that we might reflect the faith we share. That a world might see how much we care about you and about them. And be encouraged to shift their focus if need be, off of themselves, off of those things that are untrue and unjust, toward a future you've dreamed for all of us to share, a world where people do care. and act in ways that create a freedom and a possibility for everyone. Help us to reach beyond our disagreements to find to find a future that is about hope and possibility. Walk with us along our way this week. Fill us and encourage us, guide us and direct us. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it's time now to lean into the week that's rolling out before us. 
But before I let you go, I just want to lift a few things. One, thank you for checking in with us again. It is, it is my hope that among the words that were shared on the faces of those who shared leadership in the music that was lifted, you, I hope you found a sense of God's spirit stirring in you. But thank you. Second, next Sunday is a special Sunday in the life of our church. It's Lady Sunday and Barb Strote, who is our Administrative Council Chairperson, will be bringing the morning's message. You won't want to miss it. Third, small groups in our church have begun a study of spiritual gifts, looking at them in a way that helps us, helps us find our place in the ministry and movement that is West Highlands United Methodist Church. There's still time to hop into our Saturday morning men's group or our Thursday afternoon women's group. If those times don't work for you, there's time to start a new group and uh, allow you to, to, to begin this important study uh, for you and, and, and for us. Fourth, about a month from now, about a month from now, we'll be celebrating Veterans Day. We're designing a special service again this year. We want to honor those who have served uh, our country in the armed forces. So if you're one of those folks, we, we would love to have you share a photograph of, of you during your time of service to our country. Uh, we want to include you in the way we will be honoring those who have served our country in that way on that day. That's another day when we'll have a special speaker. The Reverend Larry Sparr will be with us, and Larry is a veteran. Uh, and he'll be reflecting perhaps on, on that or uh, whatever God lays on, on his heart. Claudia and I will be away for some rest and recuperation. But as you step into this week, I hope you know that God goes with you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, calling you to be God's people, walking beside you every day in every way. Amen. When the light has come, turning night into day, this labor on earth that is for heaven's sake. May the seeds that we sow keep us close to the vine, yielding fruit in a season that comes in with the time. When our work is done and the day's at an end, let us rest in your arms till the new day begins. When the new day dawns and our work is resumed, may this labor of love and the way we live life bring all glory to you. May the fish in the sea and the bird on the wing Keep us mindful of grace In the water and wind May I care for all things On this earth that we share With our sisters and brothers Answer why we are here When our work is done and the day's at an end May we rest in your arms till the new day begins When the new day dawns and our work is resumed May this labor of love and the way we live life Bring all glory to you In the Sabbath time Help us catch our breath, 
May your spirit revive and renew us again. Lord, keep all our days in our seasons and times. Let us rest in your grace every day of our lives. In the Sabbath time, help us catch our breath. May your spirit revive and renew us again. Lord, keep all our days in our seasons and times. Let us rest in your grace every day of our lives. In the Sabbath time, may we catch your breath. May your spirit revive and renew us again. Make our days your days in all seasons and times. Let us rest in your grace every day of our lives. Let us rest in your grace to the end of our lives. And when our life is done and the night closes in, let us rest in your arms till the new day begins. When your new day comes and you raise us up, may your labors of love and the way that we live show your grace lived in you. 